Hi, Meg. How Hello. are you? Hello. I'm OK, thank you. How are Good. you? Good. I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for agreeing to be in my interrogation chamber and um, uh, looking forward to the chat as we go through. Meg, we, we know you very well from all sorts of different things in, in, in Bell Road and in, in the circuit. Um, tell us a little bit about Meg, the childhood. What was life like for you? You grew up in, in darkest Wales, in God's own country. <laughs> In God's own country, sorry Yorkshire folk, but that is the case, yeah. Tell us about um, where you grew up. Yeah, so it's in um, a very rural, central, like mid Wales, slap bang in the middle. Um, my family are from Kerry, which is a small village outside of um, Newtown. Um, so that's kind mm -hmm. of the closest town. Um, really lovely little village. I couldn't really have asked for more. Um, lots of fields, like we did lots of den building, stuff like that. Um, I used to hang around with boys a lot more than girls because at my school there were only two girls in my year group and I was one of them. Um, so the rest of my year group were boys. Um, I went to a, a little church primary school, which was um, St. Michael's. That was very nice, church in Wales school. Um, and just uh, in general, had a really great time, to be honest, a really yeah. great childhood. Um, yeah, I got to do all the things that I felt like I wanted to. There was obviously being in a, a smaller knit community, I guess, like there was lots of things going on, like fates and fairs and playgroup and things at the church. So it was really easy to get involved in stuff because it was a, like a small knit community in a small mm. village. Um, everyone kind of looks out for each other. If you've ever seen like Hot Fuzz, it's a bit like that. <laughs> it's a bit like everyone knows everyone and everyone okay. knows each other's business yeah. as well, which I don't know if that's a good yeah. thing. Or a bad thing um but yeah in general i had a great time just like a little small small town country girl um yeah i guess looking to make it big in london now but yeah i was yeah. gonna say what 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 made you i mean it sounds idyllic it sounds wonderful but what what made you move from from there um, and start a, a wholly different life really what did you do i guess did you go away to university or what did you do i did yeah i had quite a lot of opportunities through the church, funny enough, mm -hmm. um, growing up that kind of fueled my desire to see the world. Just yeah. thought there was a whole big wide world out there. I can't, as much as I love where I grew up, like this isn't it. Um, yeah, so I had loads of opportunities through the church to kind of travel. Um, I did some, some missionary work out in Albania when I was 15 um, right. with a group, obviously not on my own. Um, I went to South Korea on like a Christian conference. So like at the age of 16 I was traveling the other side of the world which yeah. is great um we used to go on like obviously family holidays abroad but it's not quite the same um and then obviously yeah I went to university in Cardiff I studied English and drama and again had more opportunities then again through the church I went to kind of Israel and Palestine um I went to Zimbabwe when I was youth president um and just I don't know it just fueled this desire to to see what was out there to see the world and it just yeah spiraled from there and I don't think it'll stop. I was going to say you've seen more places in the world than me and I'm three times your age or twice your age certainly. Oh, um, I've, I've yeah. had the opportunity though it's a different. That's brilliant <laughs> yeah so so what is it about church that 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 um, drew you in apart from being a great travel agent what what is it <laughs> where, how did you find your way into church? Oh, by accident, if I'm honest, originally, mm. Mm. Um, my mum was the Sunday school teacher. The, the <laughs> you had no teacher. choice then. <laughs> I was in church, like, before I was <laughs> mm. speaking, like, baby, you know, yeah. like, the, the church baby. <laughs> the church yeah. Baby, being passed around. Um, mm. And grew up, like, yeah, grew up in the church, but my, so my dad isn't, um, isn't a churchgoer, mm -hmm. um, isn't necessarily against it, but obviously growing up, I always had the option to go to church or to not go to church because I yeah. had one parent who was involved and one parent who was, was mm -hmm. and wasn't. Um, and there was never really any pressure. And I don't know if that's probably what kept me in the church, actually, that mm -hmm. sometimes like when I was growing up, I, I didn't go to church and I didn't want to go to church. And mm -hmm. that was OK. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that just gave me so much more freedom um to explore my own faith and I was never told this is how it is um you know my mum always encouraged me that you you should find find your own faith and I guess journey on that path like with God um and you know work work your faith out together rather than being told this is how it is and put it into a box so I think right. that yeah. that certainly kept me 
kept me in the church even when sometimes I like ran away kicking and screaming. I was like, I'm never going to touch this again. And then ended a up. A common <laughs> feeling. Were there, were there any moments when you, um, any particular moments when you found that faith or you felt that that faith was stronger or those sorts of experiences? Because it sounds like you've had some amazing experiences, even, even as a teenager. Were there any things where your faith felt really strong? Normally in the harder moments, which is such a surprise. Um, normally, I remember like when I went to South Korea when yeah I was I was sixteen and I'd been on this amazing Christian conference and obviously coming from such a small small town in a small place, I didn't even realise there were young people my age like oh they're Christians too. Mm. Um, and I just had that most, you know, the most amazing experience for like 10 days there. Mm. And then at the end of that, I actually got really angry and I was really angry at God that he take like he's given given me this amazing experience. And now what what the heck do I do with it? Like he's taken it away from me. Like, why wasn't this going to last forever? Right. Um, and it, I like I was sobbing I was crying and crying and crying like leaving um South Korea and leaving all these amazing people that I I had obviously built this connection with and you know was mm. I guess were like oh well you're you're doing you're doing faith too and you're mm. like it's you know it's okay to to wobble off the track and stuff and I think it was that that trip that I I was like oh so this this is what it is to be a Christian. Like it has to make mm. a difference to my life. Like it's not just oh I'll pop to church now and again and I, like it has to impact all of my life, my decisions, the way I treat people, um, the things that I say, the way that I live out my life. Like it has to be a living out faith, not just oh I'll mm. go on Sunday and that'll be that and I'll be yeah. saved. Um, yeah. I yeah, think, right. and that's because I got angry at God. All of that was because I was super angry that I'd had this amazing I think, experience. <laughs> I think God's got pretty broad shoulders. I'm sure he could cope with your anger. I hope he understands. Yeah. 16 year old yeah. me wasn't. <laughs> yeah, quite. Yeah, I think you're okay on that one. So, so you, you went to university, you finished university. Where did the Methodist youth president role come in? Because for those that don't know, that, that's, a, that's a big gig. That's a really big thing, isn't it? That is like... <laughs> It's a, it's a big thing. You, you, it's, it's kind of the whole of Methodism. You're representing the whole of the young people of the whole Methodist church like in this country. Really famous, isn't it? Yeah, it was. You were quite famous. Yeah. Yeah. It was great because people knew me, but I didn't necessarily know them. So that was really, yeah, that was fair fun. Enough. So how did um, that all happen? Oh, you know, I don't, I don't know. Actually, <laughs> It was obviously meant to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I, again, I kind of gone to um Methodist Youth Assembly when it was that before it was three generate and you know once I went to South Korea I'd obviously found out that there were young Christians so yeah, yeah. um we were encouraged you know the three of us that were in my local area you yeah. know to go out and go to kind of some of these bigger events <clears throat> um yeah. and we went to went to the youth assembly it was just like oh this is amazing um <laughs> yeah. and then I just I guess I saw I saw the role that young people were playing and could play in the future of the church and I was like yeah I, I agree with that I believe in that and then it it kind of just it just escalated from I think the seed was was being sown throughout mm. the years that I was attending like Methodist Youth Assembly mm. and then Regenerate and stuff and I and um, I remember speaking to my mum about it and I was like mum I think I should apply for this and she was like yeah I think you should too and she obviously she prayed on it she probably mm. prayed on it more than I did yeah and I did start to wobble a bit and I was like, oh, I don't know, because it's very um, public. Mm. Uh, you obviously get voted in. It's changed a bit now, but you mm. you kind of uh, canvas, I guess, throughout the course of this weekend, trying to like rally people to vote for you, mm. um, which, yeah, it's great that it, that's changed now. But it was quite, you know, intense and intimidating. And actually, there were loads of other great candidates the year I ran. There was probably mm. about eight of us and it was really tight. And um I did start to think, oh gosh, like, is this right? Is this right? Um, mm. And it, well, it worked out because it clearly, it, was, it clearly was right after my mum being like, no, you're where you're meant to be. Which my mum has so much, oh, my mum has so much faith. She's always just, it's, if it's meant to, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. Like mm. you, you're always where you're meant to be. Mm. With this, like the tools and stuff that you have. And I mm. just, I wish I had that, that, uh, that deep faith that she's got in, in like God and things working out. I suspect you've probably got more of it than you realise. 
sometimes. I hope, so. yeah. I hope that's something yeah. I've, I've got from my mum. <laughs> I, I hope so too. Uh, so, so what did you do in this year? I mean, what, what did it involve? What didn't I do, John? <laughs> well, tell us, tell us, because so, we don't know. Oh, I tra travelled mostly. Yeah. <laughs> um, travelled all over the connection, which was so amazing. Like, that was a, a blessing mm. and exhausting. Mm. Um, because obviously you only have this year mm. um, because then it gets passed on to someone else um, yeah. and you want to cram all this lovely, juicy, gorgeous stuff into a year. Um, and it's really all about uh, capturing the voice of children and young people like across the connection, because obviously that voice will be different in different places and mm. in different contexts. And then I guess relaying that voice in different, um, in different spheres and in different meetings um, in, I guess in conference is one of the big ones. Um, there's always the the youth report or the three generate mm. report. I think it is now. Mm -hmm. um, sitting on various committees and always making sure that I guess it's like, oh, young people aren't forgotten about. Which it, that's you know, it doesn't seem to be as much of an, a challenge now. I guess it's just mm. always bringing that. Okay, how can we engage with young people in this, or how can we include young people in this conversation? And you know, I guess people mm. always say oh young people are the the future and the church of tomorrow but if we're not careful we obviously miss out on them being part of the church today, today. Um, yeah. which is such a challenge and it's also a balance between obviously not using your age as oh like a I don't know just a, a bit of a oh well we're still here um mm. kind of situation it's about choosing wisely when to use that voice we don't yeah. have to pipe up at, at everything mm. um you know choose like I say choosing your battles but you know just using that voice effectively where you think it, sh it should be and sometimes staying staying silent because that's also like a skill knowing when yeah. to when to speak and when to listen um I think is really important so I I just had the most amazing year and visited that's so great. many districts and events and international events and um yeah local events I, it was it was a whirlwind, whirlwind. Media. whirlwind. I, yeah. I think I slept. I slept for like 10 days after. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it sounds like a fantastic experience. And then, and, and I guess actually what you picked up was a, a whole load of voices about from young people saying, actually, we want to be heard. Mm. Um, what, what hope do you have for young people in the church? Because we, we hear pictures and in our own circuit, we hear pictures of decline, of numbers going down generally. Of people of all ages mm. and churches closing um what hope do you have for the church and young people oh so much so much hope if if traveling across the connection kind of taught me anything it's that uh things things i guess in the numbers and figures are declining but church is happening in so many different ways now mm -hmm. that that's not necessarily registered in the numbers and in yeah in like the statistics, I guess. So we are, you know, we, we are closing churches, which is so, so sad, but there are also signs of hope and, and growth and regrowth mm -hmm. um, in lots of other areas that maybe we hadn't actually expected as well. So things have sprung up in areas that maybe you're like, oh, I didn't expect that. And that's, I guess, where, you know, fresh yeah. expressions and church plants and things like that kind mm -hmm. of um, integrate and come into it that I think young young people i shouldn't generalize but um yeah. i guess can bring a fresh look we're we're maybe not always bogged down with um some of the traditions although i think some are, are on point and should be kept because that's mm. what makes us us yeah. um but there's there's like a different approach to thinking which i think is the first I, yeah. even though we're called methodists um you know there is method to an extent but but that's not confined for many young people that you know this method is this way and this is the only way yeah um, there are lots of different paths i guess to well to get to god i hope um yeah. and different ways to kind of engage and bring out faith um that that could be like yeah. pub pub church or ca cafe arts or like coffee church or like skate skateboard parks and stuff like that there's ministry happening and and discipleship happening in all sorts of wonderful exciting yeah. places and I think young people obviously there aren't any boundaries or there aren't as many boundaries with young people they don't think oh well church can't happen in the skateboard park they think 
of course church can happen in the skateboard park because god is everywhere like it's mm. it's maybe just a different a slightly different way of thinking that has it seems to have less limits although there are still obviously limits yeah do you think do you think post pandemic we might pick up some of the different things because we've learned about doing church differently um uh, we uh, 18 months ago i would have never thought about recording a conversation with you on on zoom in fact i didn't even know what zoom was <laughs> I, I do so wish I'd taken shares out in Zoom 80, you know, I'd be quite wealthy. But but in terms of, we're all having to do church differently. Um, the numbers of our own congregation who come to church on a Sunday morning now in their PJs is very different, isn't it? We, we kind of, it doesn't matter. Um, do, you think, do you think we're all going to have to rethink what it looks like? I mean, we have, I think, what a testament, like obviously no one ever envisaged this coming mm. um, and we weren't prepared actually, but goodness me, look how resilient we've been. Yeah. Like we've thought on the ground, we've um, managed to still worship. And I just think, oh gosh, like that, if that's not hope, then what the heck is? Yeah. Like if, if we've in a crisis and a time of need, we've actually still managed to do church and to, to worship and be with God then kudos to us like that gives me so much hope for the future and I think we've done it the way you know we we've managed to do it the way that we have so mm. there's no reason to not do it in the future we've you yeah. know I don't think we can just relapse and kind of go back to how we were but maybe this um lots of people talking about this hybrid um kind of post covid yeah. world that we're going to be living in I guess um, yeah. and that's no different for church um some people have obviously really enjoyed coming to church in the pjs and yeah why not but some people will also still want to get dressed mm. up and again there isn't you know we can't exclude one one group or the other so mm. it will be i think this amalgamation of of um both kind of spheres i guess coming together and again what a what a blessing that we've actually got got both yeah absolutely yeah so us. yeah so, so in this brave new world that we've now found ourselves in, not by choice necessarily, what, what, what makes you angry and what gives you hope? <laughs> so many things make me angry, John. <laughs> um, little small things can make me angry, like um, people not wearing their face masks correctly in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, but, you know, bigger things. Um, injustice makes me really angry. Um, watching oh uh, yeah watching injustice and maybe not not knowing what to do about it or not knowing what to say I think I find really hard I find obviously I'm a very outspoken person which we all know um staying silent is something I find very difficult although I obviously have said that there are times for that and I that it I find that so difficult um yeah kind of just choosing choosing when to speak and when to not um other things i guess that that make me angry are um people who like manipulate one another i guess or um put on guilt and and things like that mm -hmm. i think it's really hard to um to understand another person's situation um and we shouldn't we shouldn't uh put guilt on someone mm. or make them feel bad for their decisions I guess or <clears throat> yeah. their choices I've got wrong <clears throat> sorry um I think those things yeah really oh they like get under they get under my skin injustices I think is is the main one that I yeah I just and like equality it, for me I guess because I've, I've grown up in a world where equality is a given uh, I've never kind of lived through anything where, you know, it's been illegal to be this or it's been discrimin discriminatory to be like this or this, that and the other. Um, like equality for me is is a given and should be a given regardless of any race, gender, ethnicity, diversity. Um, I, it, yeah. It's confusing and baffling to me and I can't, uh, I, I don't have enough patience sometimes with the world to be like, why? Like, why is this still a conversation? This shouldn't even be a conversation. <laughs> Um, it's kind of like I want the world to catch up with my yeah. <laughs> with my opinions and my feelings yeah. but obviously that's why we're all different <laughs> yeah absolutely and, and hope Where, where's the hope in people yeah I, you know obviously it's people I've just kind of complained about people mm -hmm. um, and none of us are perfect um but there's also oh so many lovely gorgeous things in people aren't there the way that 
like COVID has brought out this, uh, this need to support and be with one another. I think that's, that's such, such a good news story. And I always get chills a little bit and it happens more obviously in London than it does in Wales where um, the traffic moves for like a police a police car or an emergency service vehicle and I just think oh like that that's just such a, a gorgeous part of like human behavior um, that that something something great can happen when people yeah. come together um, yeah. well, well move apart I guess in that traffic situation yeah, um, yeah I just think there are so many gorgeous little bits within people that maybe we don't always recognize and yeah. and maybe we don't always bring out like sometimes i think actually i like the people see the worst of me um which you know isn't 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 great i hope people don't judge me on my my worst behavior but judge me on my my best behavior i hope we probably all hope that Meg it, it, with our behaviors we hope that we're all judged on, on our best and, and we all we all go wrong yeah we all go wrong at, at times and yeah that, that is good a couple of last things just to chat about do, do you have a particular piece of music that speaks to you a hymn or or doesn't have to be a hymn just a piece of music something that it's kind of if you, if you could go to the desert island not that I want to steal another show um what would you take with you what would be your one piece of music Ooh, one piece of music. Um, that's a good question. Oh, it's Trust in You. That's yeah. probably the one that I um oh, who's it by? Lauren Daigle. Lauren Daigle, yes. Lauren, fact, Daigle. Lauren Daigle, like, we got there. I would say a new kid on the block. She's probably not now, is she? No, but she's got a fantastic um, voice. Yes. She yeah. has got, and it's very like um oh like it could be in, it, well some of her stuff has been in the charts actually um in i know in america um yeah. it's very like authentic and rich and pure and i think um the trust in you song which i yeah i have danced to before i i love that because it's kind of about her getting angry yeah. <laughs> there's a theme occurring isn't it yeah. um it's about her kind of being like oh when you don't like i want you to move the mountains and you don't and yeah. you don't do this for me and you don't do that you know which we've all done with god he's not a genie mm. but we you know we've asked for these things mm. um but the i guess the message of the song is actually no like even though you haven't done those things i will trust in like i will trust mm. in you it's not about my my personal gain and my wish list is it it's yeah. and i just think oh i love i love that song it gives me chills actually and i loved dancing to it so i would definitely recommend lauren daigle i think her her whole album is great actually so if anyone's looking for a new a new piece of music to listen to yeah. get on that good good we can recommend that yeah it's a great great album good and and i think what you're saying is really important that sense of of actually when we think about god god is not always somebody who we agree with and things don't always happen the way we want them to and we can actually we can argue with god and we can disagree with god and that's 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 good that's good it's it's a friend mm. that way yeah good and last Last question, one I've asked everybody, is about the resurrection. It's Easter season. What does what do you think resurrection means to you? Oh gosh, the hardest question to the last. Save to the last. Oh, resurrection. Oh, it's this gorgeous bringing bringing back to life, isn't it? It's like zesty. It makes me think of, and this is obviously not any official biblical terms or anything um like biting you know when you like bite into an orange or maybe a lemon if you're keen on that and it's just like oh it fills your mouth with all this flavor and it's like an explosion in your mouth and it's like your mouth has never tasted like anything anything wow. like that before yeah it's like a yeah. oh like where is my where have my taste buds been before this mm. um yeah. that always that's a very weird analogy maybe but it makes me that makes me think cool. of the resurrection that like you've been asleep oh, asleep for a little bit or you've just been oh i don't know complacent or just yeah. chilling, chilling out and then the resurrection is coming like a zesty little lemon or a juicy orange yeah. you put it in your mouth and you'd be like oh oh blooming heck well that's how it is so um, yeah so it's where your senses all come alive i guess so and yeah. you rekindle really that like mm. oh yes like this is amazing like god is amazing jesus died for my sins and it's like you've re relearned it all over again i guess yep. like the same yep. with a, an orange i'm sure we've all had an orange or a lemon mm. but it's like re 
retasting it. It's like the first time all over again, yeah. sort of, isn't it? So I, yeah. that's what makes me, makes right. me the resurrection. I'll go with the nice juicy orange. I'm not so sure about the lemon. That's fantastic. Meg, thank you very much for your thank time you. and all you've had to say. It's been fantastic. So thank you. And um, yeah, thank you very much. And all the very best for all that is to come. Thank, thank you. John.